With Jamie returning from the UK and me from a visa run to Kuala Lumpur, we decided to meet up in Indonesia's capital, Jakarta. It's one of the biggest, most populated, busiest cities in the world. Among other things, it's famous for its traffic and its pollution. So why do we bother to spend any time here? Hello! Jakarta's actually one of our favourite cities. It's vibrant and modern, but with a huge cultural heritage. Also, despite the traffic, many parts of the city are pedestrianised and easy to get around on foot. But on every street corner, there's something happening. This being Southeast Asia, where the local people hide away from the heat during the day, Jakarta really comes alive at night. Our hotel was based near the Fatahilla Square, also known as Old Batavia, a favourite spot of ours. And judging by the amount of people here, also popular with the local tourists. This is the perfect place for Jamie to do some night photography before returning to the boatyard to crack on with that rudder repair. back to the skeg and uh, just to give you an update on what I've been doing with some micro balloons which I will explain in a minute. Uh, as you may remember we had to grind away at the bottom of the skeg in order to get to the top of the bronze shoe that sits on the skeg. So we ground this away knowing that we would rebuild it at one point and that's what we're doing now. So we're rebuilding it with a mix of epoxy and micro balloons. Micro balloons just another name uh, there's lots of different names for them, but essentially micro balloons, well, and if you take the West System uh, brand name, they call it 410 Microlite. Essentially, these are tiny little balloons. If I can open this up, you can see in here, it's powder. And these are tiny, tiny balloons of fiberglass. Customs took a great interest in that when they opened my suitcase coming into Jakarta. They allowed it through though. So the idea is, is that you mix up your epoxy as you would your two-part epoxy and you add spoonfuls of this stuff. It's very, very light. And you add it in to your mix and you mix up your epoxy as normal. Now, this has been sitting here for a good 10 minutes already and you can see it's starting, starting to get to the consistency of um, icing sugar. Now, if you try and apply this too early, it will just drip and run. So I'm just going to leave it just a little bit longer so it's starting to harden off. And then I'll just paint it on with a cheap ass paintbrush uh, just to fill in the gap. So I've done one layer already. Uh, I've sanded it back and it's just left these little, uh, little lumps and contours here which I'll fill in with this second lot. Now the reason for using micro balloons instead of straight epoxy is that A, it is much easier to sand back and B, it allows you to shape the epoxy. So obviously this skeg here it's got a curved uh, back edge and we have a straight line here. So after yesterday 
after applying the micro balloons and epoxy, it sort of left a big drippy mess here. And as it dried, I was able to sort of wipe it away and create a, a very rough line. And then this morning, I just ran the sander over it. And you can see we can now start to build up this uh, straight line once more. So that's the advantage of using micro balloons. It's just very easy to deal with. Very easy to work with when it starts to dry. That's what I love about this. I hate dealing with straight epoxy. It's messy, mucky, and you always end up with sticky fingers and bits of fiberglass stuck to your hands. But this micro balloon stuff is really easy to work with. So as I'm applying it down the bottom here, it's just dripping just a little. So what I'll do is I'll just run another cloth along the bottom line there. But I'm trying to build this up so that I fill in all the gaps so that when I come to sand it back, we should end up with a nice smooth, straight surface. So there's nothing wrong with obviously over applying it, you just have to sand back a little bit more, but as I say, it's very easy to sand. You can see, if you do this, you can see how you sort of, it makes peaks and then give it a few minutes and it sort of finds its own shape and it smooths out again. So you always end up with a, a smooth dry finish. Now you can maybe see here, it's just starting to drip down here. So as it dries, I'll just pull this back a bit. I'll go and do the other side and if this is dripped too far, I can just run a cloth underneath here just to straighten it up. So you can see the uh, micro balloons or the West system, 410 micro light system is very easy to work with. As I said, it's, uh, it, it's quite different to using straight epoxy. It just gives that lovely sort of consistency that allows you to shape and smooth lines. And you'll see in a minute, I'll just point the camera back to it with it almost dry now. And you can see how um, the finish before sanding is still really, really smooth. So it just makes the last bit of sanding that much easier. Having returned to Indonesia, armed with the necessary materials to finish our rudder project, it was time to crack on and get Esper back in the water. More on that in a moment, but first I had to get over my jet lag. When I travel long distances from west to east, leaving the cool, temperate climate of the UK to land in the sweltering tropical heat of Indonesia, I'm getting to that age where recovering from jet lag takes a long time. Getting up at strange hours meant I took very early morning walks along Madana's beach where I got to play with my new second-hand purchase. This is a test of the Cinelike D profile for the Lumix GX85. I discovered this hack only yesterday because I've only recently bought this camera. Uh, I really bought it as a backup stills street photography camera, but uh, since it records 4K, I thought I would uh, try out a few little sample shots with this profile and uh, see if it would work as a B-roll video camera. For a cheap eight-year-old camera, the Panasonic GX85 is a little marvel, taking great 4K footage seen here, as well as being a compact stills camera. This has become Liz's new camera for her shell photography project, which we'll talk more about in a future episode. I guess now, however, it's time to stop dicking around with the camera gear and get back to that crucial boat work. One of the many issues we have with the steering, you imagine the steering cable comes from the pedestal in the center of the boat, back into the lazarette and it has to go around a block pulley system that take, to take that cable sort of 90 degrees. And uh, when Hendro was removing it, when he was fitting the new cable, uh, one of the legs broke. So he's actually just taking it away to his workshop and has just fitted a new leg onto that. So let me just quickly show you that. So cable comes out, it goes around this block, which you can just see there, which Hendro has cleaned up and onto the steering quadrant. And unfortunately, this had uh, broken off. So we've got a whole new leg. So this is the old one. This is the new one, yeah? So it's actually been welded here. 
I'm very sorry about the background noise, but I need to record this and get it out of the way before Hendro fits it. So, what he was saying was that this part here is not just welded, because if we just welded a new piece onto the old piece, it wouldn't be strong enough. So I think he's saying he's actually cast some of this. I'm not entirely sure where. And then the other thing he's done is there are two new bearings in the pulley itself. So one on the top you can just see inside there. And then another one on the underneath of this pulley. So that now runs like so. I don't think that was moving when we took it off. Anyway. A new one of these was going to cost about £500 sterling. Minimum. So what we're seeing here is the, underneath this sort of darker cream colour, that is our micro light, the micro balloons mixed with epoxy. And then this whiter stuff is uh, epoxy filler. So it's a two part epoxy filler and I literally just paste this over just to fill in the remainder of the gaps. I do wish this guy would shut up. We have to put up with this five times a day, plus another 20 recordings of children screaming down a microphone and it's very frustrating. I'm recording this under the shelter of a catamaran far away from the boat because I've got the generator running. Just been uh, grinding back the skeg. So just to give you a little update, Hendro returned yesterday with the bronze shoe and what he's done is he's rebored the hole which allows us to put in a new bearing. That's the stuff made of Torlon which he also got turned. Uh, we've made the hole a little bit bigger, one half mil either side to accommodate a three mil thick bearing. Didn't want to go any thicker than that. Uh, because obviously you start to uh, eat into the body of that uh, bronze housing. So it should just be, uh, it should be okay, three mil thick, we think. Anyway, so he popped that in yesterday. Um, he then tried to take it out and accidentally broke the top bit. If you imagine it's shaped like a top hat. So he's broken the top bit, but actually that doesn't really do anything. It's there to replace a Teflon washer that uh, sits in that position, but <clears throat> there's a gap there anyway. So. It doesn't do much, so I'm not too worried about that. We have plenty more of tool on to remake it if necessary. So when he brought it back yesterday, I then offered the bronze shoe up to the skeg and uh, it fits, but it's actually now a little bit loose, obviously because I've been doing quite a bit of grinding on that skeg. So now what I'm doing is I'm rebuilding in patches just with some extra fiberglass, not filler, fiberglass, because this has a bit of structural integrity to it. So it's got to be strong. Uh, just adding little strips here and there, waiting for it to dry, grinding it back, offering it up again. And uh, I've just put the second lot on this morning. That's now got to dry. If I'm lucky, I may be able to check it this evening and may even be able to sand it back this evening. Um, but we're pretty much there. So Hendra's day off today, he'll be returning tomorrow. So maybe tomorrow we will put the rudder back on, not sure. Uh, the other thing I've done is as well is where I've built up the top of the skeg above where the bronze shoe sits. Um, that's more, it's cosmetic, cosmetic but also has to be a sort of aqua dynamic as well. So we need to retain the shape of the top of that skeg. Uh, so I built that up, that was with the microlite. And um, now that I've finished that, I've just given it a quick paint with the uh, bit of epoxy just to toughen it up. And obviously we're gonna prime that as well. So. There we go, that's a quick update on where we're at at the moment. And uh, yeah, it remains to be seen whether we'll get in the water in the next week or so. But in theory, this is the last of it. Little comment on the weather, beautiful weather. This time last year, it was absolutely pissing with rain. The northwest winds had kicked in and the anchorage out there was almost untenable. But at the moment, it's pretty much flat calm. So uh, we're doing all right in terms of timings. So, uh, yep, fingers crossed, onwards and upwards, tra-la-la. -la.